Hello, it's Topher again, and today we're going to be drawing one of my favorite characters from a long time ago, and Elroy Jetson. And this is how I draw Elroy. And there are other ways to draw him, and there's other ways to do it, but this is how I do it. And so I hope that you, you like, and um, if you have any questions or comments or if you see something or uh, a better way that I can do it, please tell me. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so at this point, I did fast forward the uh, um, video. So, because when I first did the video, it was over an hour long. <laughs> and I don't think you want to sit through an hour of me drawing and part of it is not talking to myself. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're starting with Elmo, our Elroy's head and we're getting the basic shape down um, using uh, our circle for his lower head, more of a squarish um, section for his top head, a small C for his ear. And as you see, I placed in the eyes and the nose and the mouth to get a little bit of positioning and to see where that fits. And here I am just working on the hair in order to place in the correct dimensions along with his hat. As you see, I do corrections as I'm going along um, in order to try to make it as visually appealing as possible. So here is his, um, his little neck piece. I don't know what you would call it. I guess it's sort of like a collar. And Elroy, I didn't realize until I started drawing him, is kind of pudgy, just like me, which is fine. Everybody has different body shapes, and it is fine to be whatever shape the drawing wants to be. So looking at the reference that I looked up for him, he did have his hands in some really weird positions. It, one of his hands is resting on his hip while the other one is pointed up in the sky like and his palm is open sort of like he's wanting or carrying a pizza tray so i don't didn't really like this um pose but as far as my reference um i was trying to follow it and without copying it Here we see the different hands. And his hand is turned backwards. So if you can tell, the thumb is placed in an odd section. Um, continuing to work on his overalls by defining the shape of his hip down to his shoes. And Elroy has, looks like a giant onesie um, with shoes, sort of like the old Dr. Denton's. I'm just darkening up, darkening up the lines that I really like to see, um, changing them around a little bit. I still am not too thrilled with that upper hand. It just, it gave me a weird position, uh, trying to be sort of flat, but also seeing the fingers. So as you can see, I've done those a couple of times until I finally found something that was a little bit more on what I liked. I was having trouble with the fingers and with the width of the fingers um, because of the 
sort of trying to make it look like his hand is flat up in the air. That's the good thing about when you're drawing something like this, even from a reference. If you don't like it, erase it. And here I hated the shape of the head. The head wasn't shaped quite like I wanted to. So I went back to my first lines and I made his head a little bit more rounder. kept most of the spot as far as the position for his eyes and his nose and his mouth. And here you can see I'm redrawing his hair. Now Elroy has not only his hair poking out, but it's underneath his hat. So I shortened the head a little bit here in order to make the hat fit a little bit better. It almost went right off the page. <laughs> Very close to the top. And defining the shape of the hat. So it's not quite a baseball cap. And he has these funny little round things that are poking around his his hat uh, on top of the on top of that little antenna, because of course everybody in the future has antennas on their head. <laughs> so I'm looking this over, just um, strengthening some lines and rechanging his eyes. Right there, I thought that was so cute, even having his eyes closed. <laughs> he sort of looked really cute. And I was just changing his eye position to see, to make it so it's lying on his face correctly, since it's sort of turned a little bit. So before I start to ink, I wanted to test my ink along with some of my markers to make sure that the ink is not going to bleed. And as you see, saw, it may bleed a little bit too much. So this is where I decide, okay, well, what am I going to do? Well, am I going to color or am I going to um, ink first? So what I decide to do is I decide to color first. So I'm just toning down some of the lines um, to make it more visible or just more opaque, um, more transparent, I'm sorry. And so I'm seeing the lines, but they're not strong lines. So when I'm coloring, the lines won't show up within the picture. I tested all my colors together because we want to try to get a little bit of a blend and see which one is going. Um, because Elroy wears that green overalls and green hat. So I start at the top of the picture. So as I'm working down, I can also um, give it a little bit more shading. And that's the wonderful thing about Copic markers is that once you get a base layer down, if you're going to add on top of it, it they blend very nicely. And by going it over multiple times, you can get a very smooth gradient. And so I finished the back of the hat, gave it a little bit of shadow underneath, and now I'm working on the brim of the cap. So the, since the brim of the cap is typically in a darker um, location, I just use the one color in order to um, keep it at a dark color. Here I'm working on um, Elroy's hair, and Elroy was a blonde, so using nice bright yellow for his hair. 
trying to stay within the lines. In order to give it a little bit of a shadow, I then changed over to more of a yellow orange and give it a little bit of shadow underneath the cap and around the edges to give it a little bit more depth and allow, allow it to stand out. I go back and forth between the two colors, the yellow and the yellow orange, in order to blend it in, in order to uh, get a better seamless type look, but still maintain the shadow. So now I start working on the face. And he's kind of a pale, peachy color. So lay down a nice, smooth color over his face. I did it in sections, so when I was working with it, I can use the marker in order to make its own shading by um, applying more tint to the shaded areas and using the same color in order to take care of his arms and his hand. And once I gave it just the standard color, I gave it a little bit more shadow You're working on that kind of strange, posy hand. All right. Being satisfied with this, uh, I did go to the next color, which was for his necktie. And I went with a orange color. And here again, I laid down a flat color and then changed over to a red orange where I just placed in a light shadow line in order to give it a little bit more depth. So now it's time for his outfit. And so putting down a flat color in sections and I started with the section that was going to be naturally slightly darker in tone than the rest of his pants. So when I go over it multiple times, it will create its own shadow. This was a nice experiment with using Copic markers. Since I don't use markers very much in my art, um, this is a good practice. And I learned some techniques and I saw some errors, and things that I didn't like when I was laying down the color. You can see I'm going over it again in order to give it a little bit more of a shade. Down at the bottom of his feet, I used a different tone of the green and to separate his legs. So that would be the interior of his thighs. So here I finished with the pants and now I'm just placing in that nice bright red tongue. So now it is time to line my art. And I'm glad I did it this way because when I went over it with the liner and I used the 
wonderful liner that I had gotten from Art Snacks, and it is the uh, the zebra pen. It has a fine brush tip and a thicker brush tip. Having those two brush tips combined really made a difference. I was able to thicken some lines in order to make them heavier or keep them light, as you can see with like the eyebrows. And just color in those lines, give him his nose, work on his smile, which has always been nice and wide. He was a happy kid. I was thinking at that point, if I don't color it in, it'll look like teeth. <laughs> but it's one thing that you can say with a lot of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. They didn't have teeth. <laughs> or you didn't see teeth very often. So I'm going over the whole picture with the liner and working in sections. Now you notice that I'm constantly turning the page. Uh, I, as I said in other videos, when I'm lining, I like to draw and line towards me. This is um, so uh, when you're using line, the liner or when you're um, using like pen and ink, you don't accidentally splatter it. Because if you go up with a certain pens, um, you'll just get black splatter all over the place. So here I'm just at the last of the lining getting the shoes, giving them a darker contour underneath um, where they would be touching the ground and giving them a little line. So you see that there's a padding between the top of the shoe and the bottom of the shoe. And giving it a little bit more detail as far as his pockets. And here it looks like we are all set. And just, of course, signing it because we have to sign our name. Date it, and there we go. I hope that you enjoyed um, drawing with me today. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And if there's something that you want to see me draw or your favorite cartoon character that we can try, um, please tell me. I'd love to try to draw different cartoon characters, especially ones that we all grew up with. All right, thanks, bye.